Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at lazy generator expressions. Uh, we are going to understand about what are lazy techniques and what are eager techniques. Uh, and we are going to look at some examples. So to understand about it better. So uh, let's see, big, let's begin by understanding what are lazy and eager techniques. So lazy techniques are when you have a so basically, let's say you have written a program which processes some amount of data, uh, but you that the, the function that you have written gets data only when it is needed, which means your function is actually get fetching the data on demand, and it is it fetches the data it fetches data only when it is required, and also it fetches only that amount of data which is required. On the other hand, if you have generated the entire data upfront and letting your function processes and letting your function process the entire data that is called as eager technique which means you are generating all the data upfront and letting your function process the entire data on the other hand the eager technique tells what eager technique says is that you just you let your function process and your function will fetch the data on demand if it requires it's 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 going to process that amount of data and it, if it if it has once it has processed that amount that amount of data and it continues processing, it can fetch more data when required again. So that's what the lazy technique is. That's uh, we are just we are not going to go into too much deep depth of what what are these techniques and understand okay how many places it is being used. But uh, we are just going to understand it enough so that we understand more about lazy generator expressions. So. What are lazy generator expressions? So lazy generator expressions, first of all, they are lazy because they work on lazy uh, techniques. And let's see this example, we'll understand more. Uh, so I have this function, which is the generator function. If you haven't watched my previous video and don't know about generator functions, you should see uh, the entire uh, the playlist where I have um, uh, explained what are generator functions introduction about generator functions and then uh, more uh, you will be you you will get the context what i'm talking about here so these are this is generator function uh, why is it a generator function it has yield keyword in its body so what so uh, when you what happens when you call a generator when you invoke a generator functions it returns a generator object so let's see here what's happening uh, we have these two expressions I think if you have used list comprehensions before, uh, if you have been a Python programmer before and you have used list comprehensions, this is what you will understand uh, what's written here. So um, if you don't, then I'll, I'll tell you what, what, what does this mean? So uh, what we are doing essentially is that we are, we are having this for loop uh, and X is the looping variable. So what we are doing is, we are invoking this generator function. What that generator function is going to return us, it's going to return us the generator object, which means essentially we are looping over the generator object, right? But how many times can we loop? This generator functions, this generator function only has two yield statements. Basically it yields only two values. First, it yields 10. Second, it yields 20 which means your x is going to take 10 for in the first iteration and it's going to take 20 in the second iteration. But eventually what gets stored in your list is 10 into 10, which is 100. And for the second time, it's 20 into 10, which is 200, which means your list is going to contain 100 and 200. That it's as, that, uh, as, as simple as that. Uh, but the above statement, it is, it seems fine. It seems like it's actually equivalent, and uh, it would this would contain 10 and 100 and 200 too, but it won't. So the thing is, you loop over this generator function. You get that generator object. You can you create those two elements, which you create those two items, which is 100 and 200. But mind the difference that I have kept this entire comprehension statement in the parenthesis. It's not the squared bracket. So this is the syntax of generator lazy generator expressions 
what or basically I, I should say generator expression. So what generator expression does it it returns you generator object. So now what 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 we have seen till now. So we have seen that generator functions return generator objects, but in addition to that, generator function generator expressions also return generator objects. So generator functions and generator gen and generator functions and generator expressions they both return generator objects. So uh, what will be contained in geo go this variable? It's going to contain generator object in the end. So let me uh, run this and probably it will be it will make more sense. So let's see what is being what is getting printed. So it's printing hundred and two hundred. Uh, what is this? Where is this <coughs> coming from? It's coming from this print statement where we are printing this list. It prints 100 and 200. And then we are looping over the generator object. And when we loop over the generator object, first time it, it produces 100, second time it produces 200. And that's what we are printing here. Uh, that's okay. I think that it, it would have, you would have, if you, you would have followed till here. So, but for better clarity, let's try to understand uh and change this thing so let's say i want to produce like zero to max num let's keep it less and similarly this one as well zero to so what is this uh now we are doing the same thing, just that now we are going to process numbers from zero to five, actually zero to four, which it excludes five, max num is five. So let's, I mean, let me try to print this and show you the output. So if you see zero to four, it's going to produce zero, one, two, three, four. And then every time it multiplies the, it multiplies each element, each item with 10, which is it produces 10, 20, 30, and 40. And this is coming from the list, and this is coming from the generator after when you loop over the generator object. Uh, as I've said that if you when should you use the generator? When should when should you use the generator expression or when should you use the lazy technique? Uh, let's say if you have data which is really you're you're generating data which is very huge in size but you are only processing a chunk of that data. For example, let's say you have generated 100 bytes and you're just processing uh, uh, maybe 10 or 20 uh, percent of that, which is 10 or 20 bytes of it, which means 80 bytes of the data is just occupying a space in the memory. It's not being used, right? In that case, you should consider using generator, lazy generator expression, and basically, or any any kind of lazy technique. I'm just saying that you should, you should try uh, using the, lazy technique to produce the data. However, uh, if you if you are generating 100 bytes and you, you really need it upfront, probably you can generate all the data upfront and you can avoid that overhead of fetching the data on demand. Uh, similarly, let's see here what's happening. Um, so I print go, I'm just printing the size of it. And so I'm just going to keep this healthy. And so you see that the generator object that is generated here, that is produced here, it's the, it is taking the size of 96 bytes probably. And then the other one is 104 bytes, which means they both are almost of the similar size. So this is the data that you have generated for you to process. So for example, if these are, if you have, if you are generating data this way for your function to process, uh, we are seeing, we are looking at, okay, the size of this in the entire data seems to be 104, but on the other hand, the generator object is 96. Uh, let's try to do one thing. Let's try to increase this and see what gets changed. Okay. Now, what is the difference? You see that the generator object remains constant. The size of generator object remains constant, but the size of your item, because you grew it from five to hundred, size of that size of your actual items grew almost nine times. It was around ten hundred, and now it is nine hundred. Uh, what happens if you grow more? It 
it goes from 96 and the other one is too huge when compared so your what this tells what this data tells this tells that whatever the amount of data you generate your generator expression your generator object is going to be of constant size but if you build all the data eagerly up front you are going to occupy more memory in the, you are going to occupy more space in the memory which means now you need 8840 bytes to store your data earlier it was just 104 so if you had like almost relative uh, almost size which was almost comparable in in for example like here in the first in, when i ran it for the first time the size was almost comparable so it's fine in the, these cases you can build your data up front but but as your size as the size of your item grows and you think that only you are going to need uh, 10 to 20 or 30 40 50 percent or not the entire data then probably it's better to implement a lazy technique and generate data on demand and process it so i hope that you it 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 had it made sense to you so if if you gen you, you okay you, let me repeat that your list is going to contain the entire data up front but your generator object it's not going to contain the data it's just the object which is pointing to your generator function or the function which is going to generate the data for you for for this range you can consider it as an inbuilt inbuilt generator so it's going to generate data from 0 to i think 1000 and excluding 1000 0 to 999 and then you are going to build data as in when you start as as you start looping over the generator object but on the other hand in list all the data is present up front you can start processing so uh let me show you one more example it's more about uh, it's more about um the syntax so if if there is i have created this function and this function expects a generator expression of type this of type generator okay what is th these three uh, things what these three parameters um, tell uh, this first one tells that uh, you you are going to expect a generator object uh, generator expression but that generator expression should yield uh, should generate a generator object which should yield integers so uh, other two you can leave it for now one is about sending data and other another is about returning data we are not we are not going to we are not concerned about that at the moment but The, you can think of that this generator expression in the end it is going to generate it is going to produce a generator object and using that generator object you are going to get integers uh now what i am doing is i am calling this add all at this point and i am this is my let me remove this print statement to avoid so now if you see this is the place where i have generated my generator expression but i said that for generator expressions you have to if you have to create a generator if you have to write a generator expression you have to put it in the parenthesis but here i have not explicitly put that in the parenthesis i have just passed it the way function expect any other uh, argument that's that's how i have done it so that's the syntactic thing so you for if you have to uh, if you are passing a generator function in a if you are gen passing a generator expression in a function you don't have to explicitly enclose it in parenthesis however if you have more than one uh, arguments to pass then probably you will have then you have to pass um, put that in the uh, explicit parenthesis so uh, okay let me call this and see what what gets printed so let me invoke this example okay this print statement is coming from here Uh, so let me now put it back in the inside the print statement and let me call this so what this does is we have generated these numbers from the generator expression and these numbers i am going to sum uh, what i am doing in this function is that if that generator expression is valid produce all the numbers and then sum all all those numbers one by one and basically it does uh, it does sum of all the numbers from 1 to n where n is uh, 20 here so it produces all the numbers from 1 to n all the integers from 1 to n and it sums them up and returns that result it sums the entire number so basically you can cut this short and you can also write it like this x for x and 
generator expression. This should produce the same result too. Yeah, it does. It does produce the same result. It produces 210. Uh, if you reduce this to 10, you see it produces 55. So I hope that this was helpful and uh, that's what I wanted to communicate in this video. I hope this video was helpful and you got to learn something new. And if you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you have any doubts, please post that in the comments. I'm going to get back and resolve your doubts and I'll clarify, uh, clarify them. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next one.